Hi there. Welcome back to Kelly Martin Speaks. Got a little bit of a change of scenery with my video camera today. Maybe it'll make a difference on the light and the um, focus thing. Uh, I just wanted to do a little video on art and creativity and how much so many of us compare our creativity with other people. And I just wanted to know how you feel about your own art, um, be it poetry, writing, speaking, um, drawing, painting, uh, making things, anything. Um, how often do you compare what you do with the work of other people who have probably been doing it for a lot longer or have had a lot more practice? And how do you internalise that? Are you able to be aware of where you are and accept that where you are is perfect? I'm realising that I was trying to run before I could crawl with my own creativity and my art. Now while I'm quite confident with my photography and I'm quite confident with my writing, um, I still have a lot of insecurity with my drawing and my painting. Um, so much so I'm sort of letting myself bridge myself out of a little box, get out of a little box that I've been keeping myself safely in. I'm not sure if anybody else feels like this, but when you're sort of doing art, you may get not trapped, but um, stuck in a little niche of your own making, a, a comfort zone basically. And my comfort zone is pens and pencils, and I feel quite comfortable working with them, those types of tools. Uh, I have paints, and when I do paint, I'm 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 not too bad, but um, I guess I'm a bit scared of painting <laughs> in a weird way that it seems so big and vast and I, I'm basically learning as I go along as I have you know, no um, background in art um, and like many people that probably have started art, I, I started comparing my art with other people and uh, who may have backgrounds in art or illustration in some way and it's really bonkers, it's really silly um, we're crazy, absolute bonkers as humans basically uh, I know we compare to get our sense of belonging but it's, with creativity it's such an individual, unique thing and we all have this inner spark inside us that is so different to everybody else um, so what is the point of comparing? Um, I read a book a while back, I can't remember the name of it, it was about customers and getting customers for your business. And it was about competition and about how a lot of business, you know, compete against other businesses, you know, they have sales and they, they really market and amplify the, how much better they are, they are than the competition or they'll sort of diss the competition. And this book was very good in the sense that it was saying that those companies aren't really in the long term going to allow what is really inside them out. And um, I realise it's true with art too. Uh, we're not in competition. Um, what somebody likes in your art or my art, they like it. They'll find you. And um, I realise so many people may be frightened to advertise or share another person's art if they're on a similar line or something even if it's not similar for fear of losing customers or losing the attention from themselves um, I used to be like that I used to think I'm not gonna put other people's links and stuff on my site they might like theirs better than mine and it's just a crock of shit to be honest um, because people like what they like and if you share another person's art and they love that they'll come back to you because you've been open enough and trusting enough that and, and confident enough in your own art that you believe that their art just amplifies your art and 
your art inspires other people. Um, I'm learning this and I've had to because this week I was comparing and I didn't want to do that. And I realised I was trying to sell my art. I mean, I'm selling a few things on Zazzle, uh, but mainly my photography, a little bit of my art, but not really. I haven't done enough art. I realised that I need to practice practice more than anything because when I was at school we didn't do that much art and our practice we weren't learning we didn't learn enough and I need to practice the basics like how to draw hands and feet and eyes and the body and postures before I even consider selling my art but my, my ego was seeing other people and what they were doing and what they were selling on all these different art sites and I was thinking oh my god I must do that I've got to do that it was almost like my ego was grabbing for control I demand that I sell your art and um, it's not gonna happen I'm not ready it's it's I'll sell some of it I'll sell my photography um, but my art is new I'm a baby I'm a fresh newborn lamb and it's it's I've just given birth to it and it's okay for me to crawl with my paintbrushes and I bought some pastel pencils from eBay and I'm a bit clueless on how to use them I've been watching it YouTube and I'm still not sure of how to use them and I'm a bit scared of them because it's outside of my comfort zone of what I'm used to with my art and then I lay in bed last night and I realized Recently, some of the stuff I've been doing, not putting on my site, but I've been doing in my notebook has been a case of doing it for the audience. I can't believe I'm doing that again. You know, Julia Cameron says from the artist's way, you know, don't write or draw or paint or don't do it for the audience. Do it for the fun, for the life, the light in your heart, you know. Um, and I was doing it for the audience and it was taking the joy out of it and it was taking the inspiration and the creativity out of it and another thing last week I realized I was doing it to be grown up I was trying to make my art adult and grown up and I thought that my painting and my some of my paintings were very grown up and very adult and would be accepted and appreciated by people and loved because they were more accurate and more like life like you would see through your eyes um, and, and maybe paintings more acceptable and I haven't done as much painting but I love drawing and I love illustration and I love childlike faces and cartoon characters and baby baby styles and I, I went on an art site last night and I noticed there was had a section a category called naive art there's an art out there called naive art and they actually described it as um, how it never used to be popular and how naive it's it's termed naive and that real artists <laughs> whatever they are you know the ones that go to school and I don't know do all the college and university and the arts and etc etc sort of looked down and frowned on this naive art this illustration this childlike wonder because it was deemed that people who drew and and sketch that sort of art had no talent or skills from art school or art college and I was horrified it was good that they had this section of people selling this naive art that they call it and it was beautiful I really loved it but to call it naive it was oh it pissed me off it really fucking pissed me off I, I, I thought what a, you could come up with a much better name for that category I mean just because I haven't been trained in the art or any different medium that I'm learning along the way it doesn't mean I'm naive I'm, I, I'm bloody well you know letting my heart out my soul and it's coming onto the page and it doesn't matter whether it's cartoony and not accurate to the eye I mean I love drawing upside down worlds I love um, sketching everything backwards you know I did a little sketch the other day of a, um, a snail that was sitting on top of a cloud and beneath it was a rabbit wearing a dress and its child was a mouse and I had fun doing that and it made no sense and that's to me that is the whole point of the imagination it's what's 
I believe that anything that we imagine is available to us and it is there. I mean, there's probably whole worlds where rabbits have baby mice <laughs> and dress and wear dresses and snails fly on clouds and why not? Because my imagination, I created it, it onto the page and if, if it wasn't within me and if it wasn't within the universe of consciousness, um, it couldn't actually come onto the page. It just couldn't come onto the page. It's just... I'm just learning so much and I realise, so now I'm going to take the slow pace. I am going to draw and I may paint what I love more than anything and if it's not grown up and if it's not adult and classed as classy professional art, fuck that, I don't care. I'm going to play and it's, you know, my art may not be commercial, it may be. And who says what's commercial? Um, I would not listen to any art teacher if they said my art was not commercial. Not now. Back when I was at school, I took paid attention to the art teacher and that stopped my art. I, I listened to the adults who were supposed to know better. But then I figure, you know, some people who are art teachers are only art teachers because they've been too scared or fearful to let their art out into the public eye. And teaching is a lot easier and safer not that this is for everyone, you know, but you can teach and still do your art as well. Um, but some people are saying the same with film critics. Film critics who um, are people who feel like they've failed as film makers. Um, but it's probably not true. They've just been brainwashed. They've been tainted by some thoughts along the way by somebody saying something and they believed it. It's not true. So if you're an artist out there, don't believe that your work is not commercial. If it's unique, it doesn't mean it's not commercial. It may not go out and get printed ream after ream after ream where thousands of people buy it, but you know, it could sell far more than anybody else's. So just believe in yourself and, and don't believe those adults and those teachers around you. Believe your own art and let it shine. And I really want you to listen to this because I need to listen to this too. It doesn't matter about the audience. And if, yeah, if you want to make a living out of this, it does. But go easy in the beginning. Just take it easy and do your art for you. Really do it for you, not for anybody else. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm not going to be on YouTube probably for a little bit over a week as I'm off up to Newcastle. And uh, I'm having a social network sabbatical. I may comment on YouTube, uh, but I'm not going to get involved much on the internet while I'm away. I'm going to be fully present and fully engaged in where I am. And I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you for listening.